Greetings friends, it's me Wayman, and come on to do a video on Karen Armstrong's uh, Case for God. And I'm on uh, page, uh, I think 225 now, but I'm going, going through it kind of slow. Uh, I've been highlighting some stuff, and uh, I got the Nook Reader here, and um, I had some stuff highlighted. I'm going to hold this up so I can read without looking down, but um, I'm going to go through some of this and comment and uh, let me know what you think. Um, so, page 30, Karen Armstrong writes, This brings us to a second principle of pre-modern religion. Religious discourse was not intended to be understood literally, because it was only possible to speak about a reality that transcended language in symbolic terms. The story of lost paradise was a myth, not a factual account of a historical event. People were not expected to believe it in the abstract, like any mythos. It depended upon the rituals associated with the cult of a particular holy place to make what it signified a reality in the lives of the, of the participants. So, back in the day, I, I think that rather than having dogma, you know, saying, I believe this, I believe that, uh, obviously people participated in rituals uh, that changed their lives in profound ways. And I think today we don't have enough rituals, um, especially coming of age. We have a lot of, you know, 10-year-old, 40-year-olds out there running around. Um, I think that, you know, what's a ritual today? Uh, a coming of age, getting a driver's license or graduation, you know, th those are big things. But I, but I think that... Um, it's nothing uh, as profound. Uh, Self-realization and realization of the community and your dependence and interdependence on the community. Uh, it's not as strong. Graduation is not as strong as, as maybe being captured from your village, put in a man camp or a woman camp for, uh, you know, 10, 15 days. And going through this uh, extreme, you know, birthing process from adolescence into adulthood and into uh, the community you know which is pretty interesting and now today we can just go to church sign a card say I believe get down the right fan club for God and everything will be okay and um, I think it turns um, that right there that idea right there uh, just believing a set of doctrines uh, ended up scandalizing uh, the uh, consciences and hijacking the consciences consciousnesses of uh, the human in general. So there's another interesting one here. Uh, it was on scripture interpretation. I think that is uh, page 108. This is interesting, too. Uh, Revelation did not mean that every word of Scripture had to be accepted verbatim, and the Midrash was unconcerned about the original intention of the biblical author. Because the Word of God was infinite, a text proved its divine origin by being productive of fresh meaning. Every time a Jew exposed himself to the ancient text, the words could mean something different. That's something uh, also today we got away from. You know, everything's set in stone. Uh, the only people that can interpret um, uh, religious literature, you know, would kind of be the uh, minister. You know, they say, oh, you know, we, we like to keep the biblical literature the same. But, um, you know, when you go to Sunday school, you get an interpretation of that. So, so what I find interesting is people have all these little study Bibles. They like to take notes. A lot of them are horrible. They take notes on what other people say. You know, they should be taking more notes on uh, how they uh, view the text. But we've been taught in our minds, and they've been taught that they may not have the correct interpretation and they should get it checked out first. You know, um, the literature speaks differently to the individual. 
you, you need to be able to scramble it around and to be able to use it uh, as you need to, to to make it relevant in your life. If you're not doing that, it's junk. It's junk. So, uh, there's another interesting, uh, which leads us into this other comment that I wanted to make. Page 111. This is good. And I, if I ever did a, did a Bible, I would hand out Bibles like these. But this is discussing the Talmud. In some versions of the Talmud, there was a space on each page for a student to add his own commentary. He learned that nobody had the last word, that truth was constantly changing, and that while tradition was of immense importance, it must not compromise his own judgment. If he did not add his own remarks to the sacred page, the line of tradition would come to an end. Religious discourse should not be cast in stone. The ancient teachings required a constant revision. What is Torah? Ask Balev. It's the interpretation of Torah. Excellent. So what is Buddhism? It's the interpretation of Buddhism. What is um, Quran? It's the inter interpretation of Quran. What is the Bible, New Testament? It's the interpretation of New Testament. And um, I think that um, that's pretty much a uh, shot today. You know, we, I guess what I'm frustrated with mainly is that we get uh, the cheesy stuff. You know, uh, it's just kind of like a surface level kind of spirituality. We get up, we might read our religious literature for like a half an hour, read a little devotional, say a prayer, go to work. Oh, I feel so fulfilled. But how is that literature impacting your life? You know, are you living the metaphor? Uh, if you're not, it's not working for you. Y you could be accidentally living it. You know, when you come to the realization, hey, you know, maybe I'm an Odysseus. Maybe I'm an Aeneas. And I have to get from point A to point B. Or maybe I'm not going anywhere. Maybe I'm just sitting underneath the bow tree trying to figure things out for a while. So, that's what, that's what myth is supposed to do. Myth is supposed to tell us where we are in our lives. And, and I think that um, in society today, uh, the idea of myth is hijacked. Uh, restrictions are placed upon it, how you can use it. It's like going back to software, giving a kid, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm going to use Barnes & Noble's Nook just because I have it here. This isn't a commercial. When they first came out with this, it was locked down. You couldn't do anything. It wasn't even a tablet. It was just a reader, a color reader. Nobody wanted that. So what the punk kids did, took an SD card, put honeycomb over top of it, ran it as an Android app. Applications, uh, operating system, I mean. Ran Android applications on it to make this Nook do what they wanted to. Until Barnes & Noble's relented and said, yeah, we'll, we'll do an upgrade and turn it into a tablet. But... I think that's what we have to do sometimes. You know, we, we have to take that back. We have to take that literature back. Reformat it into a version, into an idea that we can use. And then apply it to find out where we are in our lives, in our community, and how we're interacting with the world. Uh, I don't think we're doing that enough. I don't do it enough. You know, I sit here and talk about it. I don't do it enough. I sit here and talk about virtue. I don't, I don't even know what that is. So, uh, I found that pretty interesting. So let's see if there's any more here. There's tons of stuff in here I had highlighted, but... She went into uh, part of the chapter on uh, emotion. You know, uh, and the dangers of... Uh, a religious belief system being solely based, or a religious experience being solely based on emotion. Uh, Buddhism says that's a huge no-no. Uh, Christianity, some sections of it did. Meister Eckhart, I know, said if it's if it's all emotion, uh, you're limiting the divine uh, and the literature 
on what it can do because you're just trying to get a fix. And and that's what a lot of the complaints from atheism is, you know. Um, you know, they say, you know, religion's like a drug, blah, blah, blah. But I, I think it's being used wrong. Uh, here's 171. She's, uh, Karen Armstrong's talking about uh, Meister Eckhart. One of my favorite um, mystics. The Dominican preacher Meister Eckhart was uneasy about his this development. The, the development um, between uh, spirituality and uh, the rift between spirituality and theology uh, developed a flood of p pleasurable and consoling emotion that could be seen by more and more to people as a sign of God. So people run around acting silly, you know. Well, I don't know if they're acting silly. They're just doing what they know. Uh, you know, this emotion. Oh. For Eckhart, the intellect was still the place in the mind where the divine touches the human. The intellectus, the I ends, and the God begin. We pass over into a state that is nothing because it is unlike anything else in our experience. Ultimately, therefore, the intellect was unnameable as God. It is neither this nor that, and yet it is something, which is higher above this and that, as heaven and above earth. And therefore, I give it finer names than I ever have given it before, and yet it is free of all names. It is bare of all forms, wholly empty and free, as God, as God in himself is empty and free. So this is interesting. He's, in a way, uh, implementing uh, the Zen idea, you know, the way that can be named is not the constant way. And also the idea of the Upanishads, Eastern thought, where, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, um, in, in uh, Kenna, I believe it is, Upanishad, you know, uh, it talks about the self. Um, it's, it's seen but can't be seen. It thinks but can't be thought of. It hears but can't be heard. Uh, reducing it down to this unknowing. Going from the known uh, to the unknown. And, and I think religion is a washout. Because today, uh, mainly, uh, large sections of it uh, end up being uh, emotional therapy sessions for people. I don't know if that's good uh, because it ends up creating this environment where if, a, if something happens, yeah, there's a support system there, community, whatever, but it ends up creating a lot of wallowing. You know, there's, there's more to a belief system than emotion. You know, if we can if we can get past that, I think that um, things will be uh, a lot better for a lot of people, and, and maybe they'll uh, be able to reapply uh, religious literature and find out what they're looking for, uh, because it's always a journey. Take care, friends, and remember, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking.